the month of June is dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Now, why do we honor the Sacred Heart? Of course, we realize that the heart of Christ is worthy of veneration. For the human nature of Christ is hypostatically united to the divine nature of Christ. The two natures are united in the one same person of the Son of God. The human nature of Christ, therefore, is deserving of divine adoration. Now, any particular devotion in honor of Christ is meant to assist us to reflect on some lesson which our divine Lord teaches us. What lessons does Christ wish to teach us through the devotion to his sacred heart? Firstly, Christ wishes to inspire us to have perfect charity. Charity is the essential lesson which we learn from devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus. For the heart is the symbol of love. And so the sacred heart represents Christ's love for us. When we pray the litany of the sacred heart, we reflect on Christ's love for us as we address our Lord as the ardent furnace of charity and full of goodness and love. Christ himself tells the charity is the most essential lesson of this devotion. We recall how our Lord appeared to St. Margaret Mary Aliquo, requesting devotion to his sacred heart. Our Lord declared to St. Margaret Mary, Behold the heart that has loved men so much. Yes, in adoring the sacred heart of Jesus, let us contemplate the love of Christ for us. For the human heart of Christ is the symbol of his love. The heart of Christ is also the symbol of the love which Christ bears to his eternal Father. For it was the eternal love which Christ bore to his Father, which has drawn the Son of God, the eternal Word, to come down upon earth in, assu in assuming human nature. By becoming man, Christ was able to suffer and thereby accomplish our redemption by offering reparation for sin. The eternal and infinite love of the Son of God for his Father must be the first and most important lesson we are to learn as we reflect on the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. For in considering the virtue of charity, we firstly reflect on the love of God. True charity always draws us to love our neighbor for the love of God. By a true love of neighbor, we desire to assist our neighbor to also come to the love of God. True charity, therefore, is far beyond natural affection. You see, true charity is a virtue since we love our neighbor for the love of God. We do not limit our charity only to those for whom we have a natural affection. We have a spiritual love even for those towards whom we might feel aversion. For in spite of a natural feeling of aversion, we still desire the eternal salvation of all. 
Consider how Christ does not exclude anyone, but gives himself as the perfect model of charity. From the first moment of his incarnation, he surrenders himself as a victim for sin, that he may thereby restore the glory which sin had stolen from God. His hidden life of 30 years is a continual act of love for his eternal father as he obeys Mary and Joseph, who represent divine authority in the home of Nazareth. How truly it is said that God's ways are not our ways. Christ's public ministry continues this uninterrupted act of love for the Eternal Father. How often Christ declared that it was his duty to honor the Father. I do always the things that please him. His life was totally consumed in fulfilling the will of his Father, such that our divine Lord declares at the Last Supper, I have glorified thee upon earth. And the following day, this totally dedicated love for the Father goes to the extent of total self-immolation as he was made obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. This love of Christ for his eternal Father escapes our comprehension, for it is an infinite and eternal love. This infinite and eternal love is represented by Christ's human heart. St. John Eudes tries to give us some idea of the infinite sublimity of this divine love of Christ. It is a love worthy of such a father and of such a son. It is a love that fits most perfectly the unspeakable perfections of the beloved one. It is an infinitely loving son that loves an infinitely lovable father. It is God who loves God. In a word, the divine heart of Jesus, whether considered in its humanity or in its divinity, is infinitely more inflamed with love for his father and loves him infinitely more at each single instant than all the angels and saints together could love him throughout all eternity. By this devotion to the Sacred Heart, we unite ourselves to the infinite love of Christ for his eternal Father. Thus, our own love for God although deficient in itself, is made acceptable to the Father. St. John Eudes goes so far as to exhort us to make the love of Jesus for his Father our own love, at least by our desire. The saint instructs us to unite ourselves to the Sacred Heart, and then to offer our love to the Father in union with the love of the Sacred Heart. St. John Eudes did this by often praying, My Savior, I give myself to thee in order to unite myself with the eternal, boundless, and infinite love which thou bearest thy father. Adorable father, I offer thee all this eternal, boundless, infinite love of thy son Jesus as a love that is mine 
I love thee as thy son loves thee. We see then that the devotion in honor of the sacred heart of Jesus is firstly that of the love of Christ for his eternal father. And secondly, this devotion symbolizes the infinite love of Christ for mankind. Throughout his life, Christ totally spent himself giving his time, effort, and strength in infinite love for mankind. And our divine Lord continues to shower forth upon mankind his blessings and graces. It is because he loves us that he has left the sacraments for our sanctification. St. John Eudes describes the sacraments as so many inexhaustible fountains of grace and holiness which have their source in the boundless ocean of the sacred heart of our Savior. And all the graces that issue from the sacraments are so many flames of that divine furnace. Among the sacraments, we especially consider that one which is most excellent, the Holy Eucharist. This sacrament even more profoundly than the others, shows the love of the sacred heart for us, such that the Holy Eucharist is called the sacrament of his love. For not only does Holy Communion sanctify us individually, but the principal effect of this sacrament is to unite us in one body, united with the love of Christ. Yes, charity is the main effect from Holy Communion, as we are reminded of Christ's words, I am come to cast fire on the earth, and what will I but that it be kindled. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.